right? Remember, we want these untethered, uncoupled, loosely coupled, but they still got to talk to each other, right? And that's really the role of the code behind file and specifically the event handlers. So I'll say if is valid, And this I'm going to get fancy and put everything in one line because I think we can handle it. To amount that text equals convert to string and what do I want to pass it? I don't want the outside world sort of to jump it in the middle. All right. Part of the black box. The outside world shouldn't know anything about the inner workings of it. You very carefully expose the things that you want to make public um, in, your, in your classes. So now let's run it and hope that it works. missing something. Oh, I forgot to close the other parenthesis. All right. Take three. All right. So one U.S. dollar is how many British pounds? Is zero U.S. pounds. Gasp. One U.S. dollar is how many U.S. dollars? Zero. Hmm. Something ain't right. All right, what do we do? Well, we can start pulling our hair out, or we can start screaming, or, or whatever. But the best, most productive thing for us to do is to run it through debug. All right? So I'll go and I'll set a breakpoint here. And we can just zero in on the code and see exactly what's going on. So I'll put in one U.S. dollar equals how many pounds? Click convert. All right. I've dimmed it. I hit F11. I'm now in that code. Double amount has a value of 1.0. So that worked. I'll hit F11, and I'll jump into this convert function. All right. 
Arg from is US dollars. Arg from amount is 1.0. Convert two dollars. Double rate equals that. Double get rate. One U.S. dollar is one U.S. dollar. That's what it's telling me down here. <coughs> it's not British pounds. It's not euros. Return. Double result equals double result times double rate. Hmm. I haven't defined the double result yet, so how can I multiply that by the rate? What should that be instead? It's not double. Re double result equals double result times rate is not correct. What should it be? Double result equals rate times what? The argument amount, right. So uh, we have probably found the problem. I like how my own imperfections turn out to be good teaching points, all right? Because while I won't lie and say I intended that, all right, that was good because we could demonstrate how you can look inside the program to see exactly what it's doing. And as soon as I saw that line of code and saw the double result out of value of zero, well, zero times anything is equal to zero, this actually should be then arg amount, as should it down here. Now, let's try it again, and hopefully we'll get better results this time. One U.S. dollar is how many British pounds? Is that right? No, I did. I did. I did actually the calculation backwards, right? Because a pound is worth more than a dollar. A pound is worth a dollar fifty or so, and I'm saying one dollar is one point five pounds. So actually, actually, these two things should be reversed. How many euros? 0.74 euros. British pound to a dollar. One British pound is how many US dollars? Should be like a dollar fifty. Alright, and it is. Now we better make sure that if we convert dollars to dollars, it shows us one, which it does, and all that. To do this right, we should test all those possibilities. Minimally, we should test all the paths in the program. All right? And sometimes you can combine test cases into one, but um, testing is another topic near and dear to my heart. And um, in addition to systematic planning, systematic debugging, systematic testing is, is important as well. All right? In other words, don't just try a few things. Yep, they all work. We're done. All right? Well, you know, you can come to some wrong conclusions that way. Now, obviously, the question here isn't how to write the world's best currency conversion class. The, the, the question here is making sure we understand good principles. Let me summarize those principles. First of all, uh, the notion of planning before you code is, is a critical principle. And again, planning comes into play no matter what you're talking about in developing web applications. Developing the UI requires planning. 
developing the custom classes, the, developing the database. All those things require planning, and yes, you should plan them all. All right? Second issue is in terms of coding, refactoring. We talked about reusability, and we talked about maintainability. The other very related concept is the notion of scalability. All right. I could have written that one function with six if statements, but as the number of currencies grow, grew, um, my if statements would get very quickly out of hand and making it a nightmare to maintain and add a new currency or if the, cur uh, the currency rates changed or whatever. All right. By instead, by thinking about it and thinking it through and, and seeing what code is duplicated, again, you know, you have to work through it. You have to think through it to think through the best way to write any given piece of code. But the bottom line is, is when you go through that process, um, you want your results to be somewhat scalable. In other words, even this non-optimized version, if we were to add another currency, all I would have to do is change this one function and add an if to it. Add one if per currency. Now again, we could do better than that. We could pull the value from a database. would probably be the best solution, and we wouldn't have to change anything. Uh, we could write an array and loop through it. A lot of things we could do to make it even better still. But at the very least, none of this code would change if we added a new ca uh, currency. All right? And the communication from the um, UI to the, the class wouldn't change. If we were to add it to a database, then we'd even handle our dropdowns and make sure our dropdowns had all the values in as well. So, again, have some sense of writing your code, not necessarily just using the brute force way, but think through and see if there's a way you can do it better to make it more maintainable, reusable, scalable. Any questions about this? I will give you a souvenir. Maybe you can write, remember to plan on it, or something like that. And we do have an independent study student in this class. Next time I see you, remind me to give you a punch card. We used to, we used to like to have fun punching holes so it like said our name or something. That was, all, that was great fun. You could tell I was one of the popular kids in high school, right? Did you just mark over this, or did you actually have to punch it out? You actually had to punch it out. With a punch? With, no, well, well, with a key punch. A key punch is, is like as a typewriter keyboard, but instead of putting on paper, it punched holes physically in this. And you'd get that's where you get the, the hanging chads from, all right? Those of you uh, that remember... <laughs> Uh, we won't go into that, but those of you that remember that, that's what those chads are. The chads are the little punches in these cards. And, you know, again, showing that we were wacky, you know, sometimes we'd use those as confetti and all that. And it would make great confetti because you'd have millions of them because every character was at least one hole in a card. All right. We'll see you over in lab then.